Yeah, um, so uh, Jeff in his opening um, talked about a, a new a AI moment for biology. Um, so I'm going to be talking uh, about, oh, uh, talking and contrasting um, two different uh, projects uh, involving uh, AI, uh, leading AI researchers working with uh, leading biology uh, groups. Um, the first is uh, from some time ago, um, so it's, uh, I, I'll show you more details, um, but it was aimed at uh, systems biology. And uh, the second uh, is a project I'm, I'm doing with uh, Jeff now. Uh, both of these were supported by the, the UK um, uh, research councils. So the difference between the first and the second is that the second is a uh, an engineer for engineering synthetic biology um, uh, network. So, and my, my description is from the AI perspective. Right, so uh, the Robot Scientist project um, was a first of its type. It ran from 1999 to 2003 and was aimed at trying to identify the functions of genes uh, in a known network, we were doing this um, as, a, as a kind of preparatory approach to a form of closed loop machine learning where there's a loop where you carry out experiments and you use the, the, those experiments in order to formulate an implicit uh, 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 theory of uh, re representing the network. Um, uh, so I'll tell you more about that. Um, the, the second project is uh, ongoing at the moment, the robot engineer, and uh, it ends later uh, this year. And uh, uh, I'll, again, I'll, I'll give you more details. Um, a key difference between the scientist and the engineer project is the scientist is really like, like any scientist interested in, in coming up with uh, hypotheses of, of facts that could either be taken as true or false. Whereas uh, anybody who's done engineering knows that it's that engineers are interested in more than just facts. What they want is to uh, optimize and make if, uh, processes efficient. So the robot engineer also has a, a cycle of experimentation but the process is trying to optimize a, uh, a given measurable value uh, of the system uh, that's being studied. So uh, in order to deal with these, um, with the, the problems of the second, uh, I'm going to be proposing a, a variant of logic programs. These are explicit uh, logical descriptions that can be used for theories but include um, a, a game theoretic element to it, which means that you're using decision theory, in, uh, which is, is good for optimization. Um, and you're also treating a, uh, a sequential process um, that is analogous to uh, playing a two-person game. Um, so I'll tell you a bit, of, a bit about that and I'll then tell you a bit about um, what scientific experimentation as a game with learning means, uh, with machine learning, and conclude. So um, the Robot Scientist project uh, was uh, a project between four universities, um, Aberystwyth, uh, Manchester, York, and Imperial, these are all in the UK. Um, it uh, involved a, a cycle, uh, which you'll see in uh, here. You can start anywhere that you like, but it's essentially you're, you're, um, you're, you're getting some experimental data. Uh, you're uh, in, from experiments. You're feeding that into a chemical analyzer. Uh, you're using uh, an, an inductive uh, process to generalize the, uh, the experimental results with respect to some known background knowledge. So uh, this is uh, somewhat different to the, neural, the deep neural net uh, techniques that, uh, that Jeff was, was mentioning. Um, and these generate explicit hypotheses, which can be read by a human. So the human can stay in the loop uh, and understand what it is that's being proposed. 
and then further experiments uh, are uh, identified using active learning, which uh, Jean Loup uh, mentioned, uh, and uh, those are selected for the robot to carry out, and the loop continues. So this is the actual robot. There's a picture of it on, on the right, which is just a kind of desktop robot that uh, can uh, carry out uh, various different tasks involving uh, uh, plates, uh, which are filled with liquids and, and so on. And on the left is the section of metabolism uh, of, uh, of yeast, uh, which we were experimenting on. And uh, we had various different uh, variants of that, of, of the yeast in which knockouts had been taken for individual genes. And we were trying to identify uh, the, uh, the functions of those knocked out genes uh, by, uh, by providing a variation of uh, various different um, uh, uh, metabolites uh, to the yeast and then uh, measuring uh, the survival of the yeast, whether it lived or died. So here's, here's more details of the S cerevisi uh, uh, network um, and uh, the various different parts of it. So there are four main uh, uh, products that are being uh, generated. Okay, so the, the paper uh, on the work was uh, published as a letter to nature in 2004. Uh, the, the, these three main um, uh, outcomes uh, that we had compared uh, the, se the selection uh, of experiments uh, against uh, uh, postdoctoral computer scientists and uh, postdoctoral biologists, and uh, the, the selection that was made automatically uh, was competitive in both cases, so we could do at least as well. Um, but uh, the robot can obviously work all day and all night, and some, some uh, human beings can't do that. Um, so secondly, uh, the th we, got a, we demonstrated a threefold decrease in cost relative to the cheapest experiment uh, selection. And uh, this uh, was um, a, a big advantage. Uh, in, in, you know, we, could, we demonstrated the advantage relative to uh, random selection of, of experiments. Um, uh, if you chose them using the, uh, the active selection process, it was, uh, the, the costs were much lower. And uh, thirdly, a hundredfold decrease in cost relative to, to random experimentation. So, um, so these were, these were strong results uh, and uh, caused a stir uh, back in 2004. There was a follow-up paper by the Aberystwyth group in 2009 in, uh, in science, um, uh, but uh, it's, uh, uh, it was less reliant on machine learning. So I'm concentrating on this particular one. Okay, so what was the key uh, idea was, that, so the key idea was to use a logic learning system. So this is machine learning using uh, what in what's mathematically called first order logic, a system called Pragle, Pragle 5.0, uh, which suggests and generates human readable hypotheses and associates prior probabilities with these. Um, the ILP system, inductive logic programming system, uses background knowledge, which is encoded in the form of a logic program. So it's, it's, it can be turned into, into human language and, re and read and understood. Uh, it uses these to generalize examples, uh, which uh, in the case of the robot scientists represent the outcomes of experiments to generate consistent logical hypotheses. So there's a certain amount of theorem proving that goes on to check the consistency of the background knowledge hypotheses and examples with the requirement that the background knowledge and hypotheses should, uh, should entail the, the outcome in the examples where these are all first order logic programs. Uh, noise is dealt with um, automatically using uh, noise filtering in, in Progol 5.0. Uh, the ASE system, which was the active part uh, select a set of possible experiments with associated costs. Uh, 
So the aim here was to select the, a series of experiments which minimizes the expected of cost of eliminating all but one of the hypotheses. And the approach that we were taking, which used uh, uh, steeper uh, gradient descent um, um, uh, entropy uh, reduction, so op uh, maximum entropy reduction, um, was uh, was uh, a, an, appro uh, an approximation of an optimal uh, solution, which was uh, pr which was suggested uh, in the 1970s by the Russian. Uh, scientist Fedorov, um, the optimal solution is computationally intractable, um, whereas ours uh, was, uh, was, was, was tractable and can be carried out efficiently. Um, okay, so um, the active se selection of experiments uh, worked by t treating experiments as a, uh, as, as a set, X1 to Xm, and you have a set of candidate hypotheses, H1 to Hn, and then you repeatedly select uh, hypotheses which maximally reduce the size of the hypothesis space at each stage until it converges to uh, a single hypothesis. Um, so uh, that uh, process is, uh, w it was well known and the approximation to the Fedorov solution was well known. So. Uh, we, we had a, a very efficient and effective way of, of, um, of doing the selection. Okay, so, uh, so that's a long time ago, um, and uh, we're, uh, we're talking in this meeting about uh, synthetic biology. So the Robot Engineer uh, is a project we've, it's been running uh, since 2018. Uh, so Jeff Baldwin is the leader on the synthetic biology side, and I'm on the machine learning side. So I'm a professor in machine learning at, at Imperial Computing. Um, so the aim here is to efficiently design um, uh, synthetic genes uh, for target uh, protein production. Um, so, uh, and we're, uh, our overall aim is to improve the robustness uh, of the design. So by design here, we mean that there's a, a selection process where we can vary various different parts of the of the gene sequence um, and see uh, and check what uh, happens in terms of protein production. So we're trying to maximize uh, properties of the protein production. Um, so in that sense, as I mentioned before, this is more like an engineer than it is uh, like a, a scientist. Um, and uh, the aim is to have a fully automated system like the robot scientist, uh, where there's no human intervention and this could be carried out automatically to produce uh, optimal uh, production of uh, proteins with, uh, with uh, great potential for uh, industrial and other applications. Okay, so this is, a, this is not the actual uh, setup itself, um, because we haven't published yet, but this is a kind of uh, dummy version or approximate version of it. So imagine we have various different uh, parts of a sequence with, uh, with sections of it, which are variable. So you have sequences X, Y, and Z, and you have residues A, B, and C. We can change uh, these uh, these different parts, A, B, and C, and uh, see the effect on the production. So we come in with various different bioinformatic knowledge. We do some start off the process by semi-random uh, synthesis. We then uh, generate uh, PCRs and we go into a sequence, much like into a cycle, much like in the robot scientist. But here we're doing uh, in vitro fertilizer, uh, in vitro translation, uh, fluorescence uh, estimations of, of probabilities uh, and hypothesis generation. Again, these hypotheses are being generated not this this time in a kind of purely uh, logic based setting, but in what's now known as uh, neuro uh, symbolic uh, using neuro symbolic machine learning. That is a mixture of um, logic programs uh, for the represent for the structural representation and uh, neural estimation for 
the probabilistic estimations uh, associated with the with the constructs being built. So uh, neurosymbolic uh, learning is a is a kind of uh, leading and uh, rapidly developing area of machine learning. But the outcome of this is very similar in some senses to uh, the robot scientists. We then have an active selection process. We choose what seems to be working best, and we feed that through, uh, through the loop, uh, generating uh, uh, various different uh, DNA sequences, which are tested out. <clears throat> okay, so um, just to give you a kind of dummy idea of what uh, a probabilistic hypothesis in a neurosymbolic setting would be, we might say that with probability 0.9, some activator binding will increase by tenfold from the native ligand when something, uh, some mutation has been uh, included in a certain region. Uh, so we can uh, we can have variation uh, that's described uh, exactly, and we can have a readout that human beings can look at. They can understand not only what's being stated structurally, but they can also get some degree from the probability of how, what degree of uncertainty we have with the various different hypotheses and parts of hypotheses that are being developed. Um, so this is a this is a gross simplification. The actual system itself will um, introduce um, new parts of vocabulary in order to do the learning. Something called predicate invention. Um, it'll also uh, do generalizations, and the outcome of using the symbolic part is a massive reduction, possibly ten thousand or a hundred thousand reduction. Uh, in, the, in the amount of data that's required in order to formulate effective um, uh, high, uh, models um, and hugely less um, com computational time than is typically used with uh, pr uh, present black box neural net approaches. So a key question, uh, how can you jointly represent the following? Um, so we, we are needing a variety of things we need to be able to describe protein descriptions, we need uh, logical hypotheses, we need a strategy for choosing the experiments, we have to describe the experimental equipment within our system ideally, um, we need to describe the hypothesis generation choices and the probabilistic choices, and costs. So in this case, costs, um, because this is a decision theoretic uh, optimization problem, minimizing these costs is at the center of what we're trying to do. Okay, so um, one various different uh, uh, existing approaches can be modified in order to support this. Uh, we're looking uh, in part at, at something called game theoretic logic programs, uh, which are based uh, on, uh, on symbolic um, uh, AI systems, including uh, McCarthy's uh, um, 1999 approach, Golog, as well um, from Levesque and Reiter. Um, the, the advantages of these representations is that they give us readable symbolic descriptions of how to both test whether things are true, so probabilistic fluence, actions, so these are, uh, these are interventions that are taken utilities, so we can apply, uh, we can have a, a cost or utility function associated with various different actions, and we can, if we like, choose multiple agents. In this case, we've got a single um, agent that's carrying out the process uh, sequentially, and we can do all of that um, within a representation that allows us uh, feedback to scientists and engineers. Uh, which I would argue is absolutely critical uh, uh, in both in both science and uh, engineering. Um, that we understand what it, how our notions are changing as the machine learning is generating new models. We're actually incorporating those into our scientific model of the world in the way that science has been operating. Uh, in uh, uh, up to the present date. There's no, no, no particular uh, need to turn science into a black box, I would claim. Okay, so um, 
the exploration uh, uh, exploitation cycle that's carried out uh, involves learning, sampling, hypothesis, and experimentation. So you've got this division between things that are going on inside the model and things that are happening uh, in the real world. So this is the same cyclic idea that I showed you before. Okay, so um, to uh, conclude, um, so we're looking at uh, some game theoretic formulations. We're looking at, neuro, at novel uh, neurosymbolic uh, learning algorithms. So, um, so some of so the algorithms are uh, published. For instance, the, the main algorithm we're using was published in the International J Joint Conference on on logic on. Um, on AI um, last year, um, and uh, it involves us, uh, within it a neural net and um, a logic program working in tandem. And both of the learning systems uh, optimize each other, right? So the structural learning being done in the logic side is being optimized by the neural net learning and vice versa. This, was a, this is a completely uh, novel approach um, that uh, was published in the, in arguably the top uh, uh, AI conference um, uh, last year. So uh, GTLPs uh, can be used to reason and formulate uh, hypotheses. Um, they represent a sub-language of uh, something not called stochastic logic programs. Uh, they support Markov sampling using SLP resolution uh, uh, derivation mechanisms, these are logical representations, so it integrates logic and probability, and uh, structure learning using standard uh, ILP. Um, we can make use of uh, notions from game theory, including Pareto optimality and Nash, uh, equilibria potentially, and uh, we can build on um, approaches that are being applied uh, in this technology, in in uh, in uh, game playing, um, so uh, this uh, has an analogy uh, in what Jeff was talking about, which uh, in work that uh, DeepMind uh, did um, that led to uh, the uh, AlphaGo system. Uh, the difference here is that you get a readable output um, at the end. And uh, in uh, early work, we've shown that you get beyond um, uh, human performance or even a bit above human performance of the best person. You can actually converge on fully, uh, fully um, uh, on uh, optimal play, at least in, um, in, in, uh, in um, small games. So there's a, a paper on that. So systems biology examples um, that we're looking at uh, involved host, host pathogens uh, interactions. Okay, so uh, these are some of the uh, papers I referred to, um, and I'll leave that uh, there uh, during the discussion. <laughs>